it is pretty week three on our extension project. Let's give you a quick tour of what's happening and all of the homework I've been given. Let's head under the scaffolding. I've put like markers up everywhere. I smash my head off this scaffolding more often than I care to talk about. So I have tried to put protective stuff all over the place. There was a bolt sticking down here and oh, I smacked my head off it. And uh, so I've, I've covered everything that and find there's bound to be stuff I've missed. But honestly, if you've got scaffolding, mind your head on, on this sort of stuff. And uh, if there's stuff like that, in areas that you walk around, you should really put a hard hat on because you can do some serious damage by walking into one of those. Anyway, self-build extension, week three for our Bricky. I'm saying week three, it's like it's day, he's been working on it for eight and a half days so far, just to give you a gauge of progress. I mean, he's an absolute machine. Obviously it's a dream team, me and Alan, I'm laboring for him, but he is basically single-handedly building the, the bulk of this extension. So as you can see we have got our first lift of scaffolding in the garage. This will become my new workshop in here. That is very very exciting. So yeah welcome to my workshop. We have got the doorway formed lintel in over there for a nice big wide doorway out of the garage into the back garden. Let's head through. It's quite dry at the minute, but we do have rain forecasts, so I need to do a bit covering up. We are rapidly getting through the pile of blocks. The depressing thing is, is that pretty much every block that's left needs to go onto the second lift of scaffolding, so that's going to be fun. Oh, check this out. Did I show you this? We built a little path. We've levelled out all the leftover spoil from the foundations. It was really, really nice topsoil, and... Although it is getting on a little bit, I mean, October time that I'm filming this, we have got some warmish weather forecast and I thought, you know what it is? We might stand a chance of getting the grass seeded and for it to germinate before winter, which would be nice. Uh, it's only been in for a couple of days. We shall see. We shall see if this uh, sprouts before winter. That would be fantastic. And it just means that we're not living in an absolute quagmire. So we've leveled all of this out. We've just kind of chucked the, you remember the sandstones that were found all around the house? We've just made a little kind of crazy paving path down here. And for the moment, we've just kind of sloped it off there. We'll, we'll seed the whole lot, and it just means it's easy to cut the grass once uh, the grass starts growing. And it's better than piles of mud, essentially. But we've got a path, and I'm not walking through an absolute quagmire now to get to the bottom of the garden, which is great. Part of my homework, I need to get this steel moved up near the house because we're going to need the cranked beam soon. We need to create a new skip pile because there's going to be a lot of materials going to come out of the house once we start taking the side wall down and whatnot and there's going to be far too much to store at the front of the house. We're not ready for a skip yet because it's probably going to be a couple of months before we're ready to actually get a skip. I don't want to be getting two skips and wasting 250 quid. So we'll make a skip pile here and then in a couple of months, once we've done the knock through and once we've got the bay window out and the uh, kitchen doorway knocked out, once all of that's out, we'll get a skip and we'll, we'll just skip everything at that point. But it does mean we're going to have a lot of stuff to temporarily store for the skip in the meantime. As you can see, the rear extension is completely finished. Let me take you up. Lintels are in. Um, all the side cuts are done and everything so I've just covered the cavity as per usual but lintels all done ready for the roof now at the moment haven't quite decided who's doing the roof yet I've got the timber ordered um, I'm probably going to do the lean-to roof at the back here probably unless I can find a joiner to do it for us I've done lean-to roofs before but nothing this big but 
you know, once you've done one lean to, it's pretty much the same process. At the end of the day, I'm going to be following all the specs provided by the architect and the structural engineer anyway. So that is doable. The bit that is less doable for me is the hip roof extension. And as much as I would love to tackle the hip roof, I do have a joiner coming out to quote on that because it'll be much, much quicker for a team of experienced joiners to do that than me kind of fumbling around. But it might still come to that if I can't find anyone but uh, we shall see. I would rather get someone in to do the hip roof extension because I don't want the roof being open for too long. Anyway, in the meantime, as you can see, I've knocked the pebble dash off here. That is the section that's going to be getting rendered. The bit that's left is where the window's going. I don't know if you remember, half of the window's going in here, half of it's going in the new bit. So that is coming out, so there was no point taking the pebble dash off that bit. I knocked the air vent out from the top there. It was an air vent to nothing as it happened. I took the air vent out and it was just blocked up on the other side. So it wasn't doing anything at all. Coming round the side here, I've got Alan to leave a cutout for the boiler flue. So the boiler flue is going to go here. So I've had uh, the plumber out to verify where that's going to be running. So it's basically coming from over there and it's going to snake its way over to here it's um it's a bigger flu 125 mil flu it's a bigger one that can run a longer distance basically so that's all sorted we've got our junction sorted uh, down here that's going to get rendered up to there there's all sorts of stuff that needs to happen here for the junction detail so we'll maybe talk about that in a future video cavity trays in there with the weep vents and whatnot which again all of that needs to get sorted out separately and the bigger thing that I need to get done is to make a start on knocking this wall out. At least if I can maybe make a start on getting the outer skin out, that will feel like I've made some progress and I need to work out where the joists are going to be sitting, where the wall plate at the bottom is going to go, etc, etc. And then one of the biggest, most unpleasant jobs is that we need to get this absolutely loaded up with blocks for Alan because we're going to need a lot of blocks in here ready for the uh, what's left to do on this first lift and then on the second lift after this. What I might end up doing is putting the blocks here. Uh, well, he's going to need access here, so no, that's not an option because he's going to need blocks here so that he can finish building this bit of wall. But then when we get the second lift, so the second lift's probably going to come up to like here and then I can chuck the blocks up onto the second lift from here. That's This is probably quite a good platform for doing that. Uh, so, yeah, I think I need to start loading blocks. Well, I'm saying I need to start. Me and Mrs. Mark will be loading blocks up onto this first lift here, ready to lift them up onto the second lift at the back here. I also need to start stripping off the soffits and fascias but I don't want to take the fascias off yet because I would like to leave the guttering in for the minute just because there's some heavy rain forecast so I would rather there was guttering there but uh, yeah I, if I can get the soffits off I can at least see what the roof's doing kind of under there just double check that the jack rafters aren't sitting on the external leaf or anything awkward like that same with the um, same with the hip I want to see where the hips resting and I need to jack up the hip from the inside just to be on the safe side. So yeah to give you an idea of time scales it's week three for the Bricky but it's actually day he's done eight and a half days because it's been kind of days on and off where I've been getting on with other stuff in the meantime because it's very rare that the Bricky can work every single day because there's going to be stuff that's going to have to be done by joiners, by builders, by labourers and stuff like that before Alan can get on with the next stage, if that makes sense. So this week he's only done two days, he's off on another job for three days and then he'll be back on Monday next week and that gives me three days to get all the stuff done that I've just been talking about. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I've um, cleared out the... where are we? I've cleared out the room that used to be my office as well because that was my kind of working area. I've had to clear that, get everything hermetically sealed because we're about to cut into that room. Lots to do, less chat, more smashing stuff.
and that is that bit of wall there down to single skin at the back. So that's all cut out and neat down here, ready for a wall starter to go on what will be the inner leaf. So there's the inner leaf, so a wall starter and go on that. That keeps a continuous cavity all the way along because the rest of this, the new cavity, will join onto that. And then that side, I've already made the cut down there because once um, the wall is in, it'll be really hard to make a cut down here and get these bricks out. So I've already made the cut down here and then I can get those bricks out uh, at, at any time really. And remember there's a window going up there so there's no point in taking the rest of that out. That'll come out once we've got the second lift of scaffolding on the other side and then we can take the window out or the brickwork out from the top there. But there's no rush to do that at the minute. It's just in order to finish the stuff on the first lift, Alan needs to get up to this level here so we need the wall starter installed on that inner leaf. So that's part of my homework. So the next bit, I'm now in the, uh, what will become the master bedroom. If you imagine this whole wall on the right hand side is gonna come out and this will become kind of one big room and it'll off shot down over the garage over that side. So this wall needs to come out. And what I can make a start on is getting the outer leaf of brickwork away because we don't really need the outer leaf of brickwork and it still keeps this room relatively watertight. So what I need to do is I need to do a cut from the outside all the way down. I need to know where to do that cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill two big holes all the way through as close to this wall as I can but it doesn't really matter where as long as I can measure back to that wall. So I'm going to do a big hole kind of up here, another one further down all the way to the outside and then that will give me my marking point as to where I need to make the cut to come down here to get rid of this wall. and absolutely sods law uh, in the realms if you couldn't make it up. There's the hole there, there's 90 mil. I measured it in 90 mil from the wall and uh, there's the mark of where I need to cut. And it is right where the scaffolding pole is and I've checked, I can't get the cutter in. So I'm gonna have to move this scaffolding pole which is a little bit of a pain in the backside but I'll just have to put it on a slightly jaunty angle temporarily, get it out the road make the cut and then put it back. I need to get rid of this security light anyway. So yeah, best get that done. So just a sanity check from underneath the scaffolding. This is the pole that's in the road. We've got a support over on that side and we've got a support over on that side. So I should be relatively safe moving this temporarily just to do that cut and then I can move it back. But don't touch scaffolding folks unless you know what you're doing. But needs must, we need to crack on. I need to get that cut done and I can't do it while that pole's there.
Right, that is us done for today, I think. We've got biblical rain forecast for tomorrow. Alan's back next week, so uh, there's probably not a lot more else I can get done this week. I've managed to get that window out, so that's all ready to brick up. Uh, I've got the wall starter in there ready. I need to double check if we're cutting into this cavity or not. I'll, I'll check with Alan. I don't think we are. I think we're just gonna run a, a double wall starter up that edge. I don't see any point in cutting into that cavity. Um, especially if we're going to leave this wall in, which I think we are going to because uh, what I did unfortunately find, I cut this section away here uh, as I say, this is where the internal supporting wall needs to stay in and you can just about see, sorry it's a bit dark, it's getting a bit late that's the end of that supporting wall, so that internal wall that's staying so really what we'll be doing is we'll be doing a cut down down there at some point. I haven't quite thought about how I'm going to do that. I might just smash the bricks out or something, I'm not sure, because we'll not get the saw in down that edge. And I don't particularly want to take any more of this away. If I was wanting to cut from the front with the steel saw, I'd have to take like loads of this away. And we've got the steel sitting on this, so I don't particularly want to take that away. I think it'd probably be better off. We've got a natural line uh, kind of coming down there, so that's fine. We'll just kind of somehow cut that brick in half. You know, if I can get in with an angle grinder or something from the inside and try and try my best to cut them as close to the wall as I can. But what we do have confirmation of, unfortunately, is that that internal wall doesn't run all the way out to the outer leaf, which means that we can't really take this outer leaf away. We were thinking, you know, we could make the room a little bit bigger sort of 200 mil bigger or thereabouts if we'd taken this outer leaf away because we don't really need it bearing in mind this is now going to be an internal wall but because we're going to have the steel sitting on this the steel needs to sit on this outer side of um, that internal wall if that makes sense so this needs to stay because this needs to go all the way up pad stone at the top across and then the steel will sit on top of that so I don't particularly want to take this out I could leave some sort of pillar um, and as I say it would make the room this much bigger um, I don't know I don't know if it's worth the hassle to be honest we don't really need the uh, ensuite to be that big sorry about the wind it's like it's brew a storm is brewing as you can probably tell by the slightly dark stormy skies that we've got at the minute it was forecast to be quite nice weather this week but uh, yeah that's turned out to be utter <laughs> nonsense as per usual. Uh, biblical rain tomorrow by the looks of it. But yeah, I think for the sake of making the room this much bigger, I think it's going to be more hassle than it's worth because obviously we've got this section here where the window used to go. And uh, what do you do about this? If you smash these bricks out, it's going to destroy the plasterwork on the other side. Same over on the right hand side as well. Ideally, you'd want them cut flush with these blocks you can't get the cutter in to do that cut so realistically um, all you could do is smash these bricks out and it would destroy the fresh plaster work on the other side of this wall bear in mind this is the wall that I blocked up so uh, yeah ignore the dodgy block work it looked really good on the other side but obviously I couldn't point this side because there was a window in the road what we could do coming to think of it is leave that as a as a nook for the bathroom. Ah, now that's an idea. Just plasterboard into that and keep it as a nook. I've also stripped away most of the soffits. Uh, that was a bit of a challenge. I managed to find the, um, what was it, like a bee's nest thing in the top there. I don't know if you remember on previous videos, bees were always kind of hovering around that corner and managed to get the, the bee's nest out. I don't know what sort of bees they were. They were kind of bumbly type bees but most of the soffits are out. I'm also thinking at this stage as well of where we're gonna be running the joists. So I think I've mentioned before, but there's where the bottom of the joists are gonna be sitting. And I think what I'm gonna do is run a wall plate on top of this. So when we take this wall out here, we'll take it right down, take the soldier, we'll take the soldier course out and just run a wooden wall plate on top of this and sit the joists on top of that. 
over on this side we can't do that so I think what we're going to have to do we've got this annoying jutty out bit uh, so I think what we're going to have to do is bolt a ledger board onto here to fill up this space and then bolt another ledger board onto here um, to take the joists and then use joist hangers uh, so oh my word insulation's just blowing everywhere well there's not a lot I can do about that there's a storm brewing as much as I would love to have got more done the weather's just uh, the weather's taking a turn for the worst and unfortunately we've got a wall absolutely filled to the gunnels with uh, with blown insulation and it's just falling out everywhere so such is life um, you know what it is I might grab some insulation just some normal insulation and stuff it into these cavities just to stop it all blowing out I guess another job but yeah where was it if that's the joist bottom and the joist tops up there so floor level is kind of there-ish then the end of the joist need to be like here uh, so yeah no we don't need anything down here what I need to do is smash out the edges of these tiles and bolt a ledger board along here I think that's going to be the only way of doing it really could I take these out no they run they run the full width under here I think do they so let me pull this up you know you see if this runs all the way through the other side then it's going to destroy the plaster work on the other side Brilliant. just want to see the edge of a brick god damn it get out Yeah, you see these bricks are running all the way through. It's, it's not uh, like a split course there. That's running all the way through the inside and then you've got the plasterboard on the other side. So taking those out is going to cause damage. Um, hmm, tricky one. Answers on a postcard. As I say, there's joist bottom. So the, the bottom of the joist is sitting right across there. And the top of the joist is kind of there. I'll need to give that some thought because ideally I would just strip out that, that and that and then run a wall plate along same as we're doing like along from that side and basically keep this as a, a pillar but getting these bricks out without destroying the internal walls is going to be tricky. I can probably maybe get the cutter in and cut some of them but uh, hmm we shall see I'll sleep on it give it some thought anyway as I say biblical rain forecast so everything's covered up as per usual all the blocks are covered all of the cavities are covered with proplex I've covered everything up outside as well and everything is kind of ready for Alan next week other than the fact that we need to load up more blocks but we'll do that after the rain there's no point in loading up blocks when there's heavy rain forecast so we'll do that on the weekend get everything ready for alan and uh yeah i've done all my homework so we're ready for next week did i mention i've got the wall starter in there so yeah wall starter's ready to rock there so alan's brickwork will run kind of well, block work will run all the way up there to the window height the window height is pretty much um kind of there-ish and then the block work, uh, brickwork above will come out. We're getting there. Still a lot to do. Taking this wall out is going to be a mammoth task. But now that I've got the soffits out, I can just start taking it out from the top. I think that's going to be the best bet. I need to continue this cut all the way up to the top. Um, I'll do that at some point. And then I can just gradually start nibbling away, taking it down from the top. I need to do something with this window because I don't particularly want to leave everything open so I might, mm, I don't know, I might take it out and then just board up the inner leaf or something like that because I'm not going to knock down the inner leaf until, well, probably once the roof's on. 
Anyway, far too dark to film anymore. We'll leave it at that for today. I've just realised that nook isn't going to work at that level because uh, I'm standing on scaffolding, which is well below floor level. This would end up being a nook like really low down. Floor level's only there, so it would end up being a very low down nook. I don't know, I'll give it some thought. Have a think of what we could potentially do with that. We'll leave it at that for today. Take care, folks. I shall see you next time. Tatty bye.